Krishna. So the last video was on how to install this script and do a character replacement in the background, which shouldn't affect any formatting. However, you will find that the old documents still have uh, non-Unicode compliant fonts, or even if they have Unicode compliant fonts, it doesn't mean that they have the those Unicode fonts necessarily have all of the Sanskrit diacritical characters, right? Because Unicode can have Egyptian hieroglyphics or webdings or any other sort of character representation it's not limited to the ascii character set whereas these old like the uh, bbt fonts like scar gaudi etc uh often limited to the ascii character sets but technology's moved on and all respects to the balaram font it served us for many years and it should uh and, and it's like an emeritus font we should show honor and respect uh, but not many people want to see the old Cree Cree. We much prefer our Shri Shri. So um, this is part two of how to achieve that. We've done a character swap. That was fairly easy. And now we're going to look at how to find good fonts that are compliant with diacritical character sets in the Unicode format. All right. Now, if you like my video at the bottom, I've got a little information, shameless plug. If anyone comes across this and finds it very useful, you can subscribe to my blog or throw us a little donation. It's up to you. Not too fast. Uh, okay. So you've downloaded, installed the script. Now we're going to look for good fonts to replace the old fonts with. And so later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to do font replacements without having to manually go in and edit all the tedious work, right? You will need to proofread. I'm saying this way ahead of time. Uh, but you don't need to go change each character or each paragraph, or each sloka. You should be able to do that automatically. All right. So we're going to need this character set here. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go to a website called dafont.com. Now, this type of searching I know is also available on other websites like the Google Fonts. They have some Sanskrit diacritical compliant fonts there. Um, I'm being visited by a bumblebee. You may hear him buzzing in the background. Uh, but the font, it's got like 77,000 fonts. And you you know you may have to dig for a bit, but you'll find something. right? Now, I like serif fonts. For those of you who don't know, um, serif just are these little embellishments at the end of the characters. Uh, my eyes tend to latch onto them, and I think they sit nicely on a page. Um, sans serif just means without the serif, so more like plain looking fonts, which you'll see mostly on like the uh, web web pages, etc. But I'm gonna look for serif fonts today. All right, same principles apply. Now, in this preview, I'm going to paste um, what I've copied from from here. I'm going to paste it, change that from medium down to small, and click Submit. And that should lay across the character sets if that font is capable of rendering these Sanskrit diacritical characters. They should show up here conveniently for us to find fonts now you'll see some characters are there and some are not and some just don't show up um, that is because a lot of the vowel sounds and the s are also in other language representations like i know tadeo maori in, in uh, new zealand uses these macrons i think there's some european languages that use similar macrons so you'll find these to be common. That's why we're searching with the entire character set. You'll see these last two are very rare. Um, so you can scroll through. Sometimes you may see a gap. Don't worry. That looks an actually nice little decent font. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to just open a new tab. Windstone. Okay. Some problems here. Personal use only. Uh, if you respect that copyright and also there are no variants i don't have a bold i don't have an italicized so not that useful i'm going to discard that now so you don't have to watch me scroll through fonts which i easily could do for half an hour or more because i actually like looking at them that one has the whole character set but it's 
tacky, sorry. I have opinions. <laughs> this one is a good choice because I already know that that font has lots of variations. Yes, a huge amount of variations. I'm not sure about that one, but... Oh yeah, and it's got the full character set including the last two. This is a keeper. Also there's one here, Aver. It's got enough. It's a little simpler to deal with. So I might use this. Um, download. All right. Uh, so we should go into the old downloads folder. We'll click my little arrow. Show in Finder. I'm on a Mac. Windows obviously a little different. Oh, drag it off. I'm going to open that. And there I've got my bold, my italics, da da da, and the license. Free for the personal use of phone. Oh, okay, I didn't see that. Um, I need to move on with this tutorial. So I'm going to install every version. All right, and cool. So you can paste these. I've already done it, but you can paste this in here as well. Okay, um, and, and check that it's actually rendering in your operating system properly. Uh, I mean, I know Windows is a bit different. I wonder if there's a way to install. No, there's no way to install it all at once, but install that font. And which one did I just install? Aver. I've got regular. Reg okay, cool. They're there. All right. Awesome. So, ah, it's good to have another one. So I'm going to download this little fellow here. Good to have two. I'll show you. There's good reason for that. So we don't end up using like Arial font in our publication, which is just overused and really visually boring, in my opinion. Oh, wrong folder. I'll just open that again. I'm going to install some of these variants. All right. Um, that's a bold. What do we have here? This Linux Libertine. It's just a clean looking font. Um, I have an italicized bold. I don't know what that is. That's a regular, just a straight bold. regular italicized and that'll do for now a lot of variants in that font it's good to have a couple fonts in your publication right so I'm going to as an example use um, file sent to me by a friend it is well let me delete that one it's I'm gonna do the front matter here because I don't want to mess this whole copy up I'm just gonna duplicate it and open the copied version so in case I make a critical mistake, I've always got that as a fallback. I double click it to open. It's giving me a warning, which I'm going to ignore. Now, upon opening, it's giving me this option to replace these and all that. Um, let's see what happens here. Okay, well, this is where we're going to head anyway. Um, I'm going to click done for now because you can get here through the type and find replace font and that opens the same dialog okay now this has a it's presenting us all of the fonts many fonts used in this document okay and so we can go by we can go here and um it's good to have a look if i go find first i can see okay that's where that's being used are there any other instances of it yeah there's one that's just a plain, there's only two uh, two uses of that, and it's these are sans serif. Now, to keep with the sans serif, I'm actually just going to use the old Arial font. I mean, we'll just have to do it, and I'll go regular and change all. And then there's a little oh, important, redefine style when changing all. That's important because I'll show you why in a, in a little bit, right? And just go change all, right? And I don't want to see that every time. It's overridden some of the styles because we told it to. 
All right. Cool. So that's one done. Gentium book basic. I want to see where is that in the document. Okay, it's there. Oh, there's only one line, one instance. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use one of our newer fonts. Um, Aver. I'll use Aver for that. And it looks... It doesn't look bolded, so I'm going to leave it regular. And make sure that's checked. Um, change all. But it did significantly change the look of that, though. Now, all these Rama Palantino, right, and Rama Times... I'm going to shift select all of them at once and I'm going to change all of these to that Linux. Wait a minute. Change my mind. Sorry, because I have different variants, bold, italics and regular. So I'm going to just select regular and regular. OK, and do the regulars. All right. And for that, I'm going to use that Linux A, B, C, D. E F G Linux Libertine just straight and you'll see the variants are there but I just want regular and change all you'll see it made quite a lot of changes in the document and you'll see also that these fonts are now being eliminated right so there's a little bit of a process here now I'm going to uh, select the bolts right and I'll go bold change all and then the bold italics think I'm going to use libertine slanted and then bold slanted because I think that's the only variant there and that's why I downloaded it change all and now that's just a regular italicized I'll group those together back to libertine italics change all and you'll see it's still the Balaram characters are there, but it, that's a one click solution. I just, I'm going to do one thing at a time here. So we'll see. We got, we've got Arial, Aver, this Linux, and there's just a few um, to deal with here, like this Palatino Italics. Let's see where that's in our document. There's only one instance of that. Okay, we'll change it to this. Uh, Libertine, right? Change all, and now it's gone. We're, we're narrowing it down. Scabinguit, bold. That's a bold, and that's a bold. I'm gonna do it all at once uh, with bold. Change all, and the skull county regular. Is that even in the? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple places that's being used. Personally, I like things with just a couple fonts. That's just my particular preference. So that's a regular. I'm going to change that to regular variant and change all. And there, I've eliminated all of the Balaram fonts or other type of fonts. These are Unicode compliant fonts now. So the entire document now consists of uh, Unicode compliant fonts. However, as you've, where'd my pages go? As you've uh, noticed, uh, it's still presenting Balaram font characters. So to change that, just a matter of double-clicking that, and there you go. There you go. No uh, layout changes. No, I mean, and I am proofreading this because <laughs> I don't want to speak prematurely. It doesn't seem to have shifted things around too much. Nothing spidering over onto the other page. That's looking nice. We've maintained uh, uh, italics and bolding. Ooh. There's three quarters of a sloka. It looks like the font. Uh, yeah, that's spidered over. So for that and this, earlier I was playing around. I can't seem to get to that, so someone who knows InDesign better can edit this uh, heading and change the font out there. I don't know why it's that way. My script didn't touch it either. You may have to manually change a few of those. Uh, but yeah, that spidering over effect. Let me show you uh, one way that that can be dealt with. Okay, first I'm going to select this and then over in my text styles panel, 
It says there's no paragraph style attached to that. Okay, that's a surprise. It's supposed to be. Um, that's quote. That's no paragraph style. What's this? All right. Okay, well, I can deal with it that way. Um, under type, there's paragraph styles, and that will open up a panel. You can dock this panel over here, but I kind of like it floating. Um, and scripts were done with. We won't need to run that again, so I'll just get rid of that. So no paragraph style. Okay, well, under no styles, uh, you can right-click that, just right at the top, no styles. Oh, there's no option to edit it. Hold on. Well, I'm going to right-click on basic paragraph and go edit. And then on this menu, basic character formats. See, it's set to Times New Roman. It shouldn't be. I need to set it to one of my fonts, which should be located now up at the top. I'll go to this Libertine. And OK. So I'm going to apply a paragraph style to that. Right, and I'm going to select the entire paragraph. Sorry, I don't know the shortcuts. And this is going to change. Um, there's da da da. Sloka medium. Let's try some of these existing styles. Like Sloka medium. Okay. Now that's changed it. And we still have Unicode characters. We don't have a spidering effect now. And that's pretty sweet. I want to check this. So I'm going to double click to open up the dialog. Basic character formats. Okay. It's doing as it should. It's showing italicized Unicode font. Cool. So there's proofreading involved here. I, for the life of me, tried for 10 minutes to access that. And I don't know how to get there. So I'm sure the process will be quite similar. Um, yeah, all of this automation does not abnegate the need to proofread. In fact, if you ask me, it, you have to double down on the proofreading. Have someone, have a, even a, a couple sets of eyes, someone, a friend, have a look over and make sure you don't have any half slokers spanning into the next page. And uh, It's looking, in my opinion, actually pretty good. Okay, so there is an example. Yeah, I guess you don't need a video of me proofreading something. So, but I don't want to be presumptuous and say, "Bang, Bob's your uncle." It worked, because every endeavor is uh, covered by fault, like smoke is covered by fire. There you go. But I actually think this is done really well. Granted, it's only a few pages long. Oh man, I got to get rid of that. This is, it looks it looks tragic to me sorry <laughs> let me try a uh, index title much better um no no insult intended lots of detail there but it looks like my script's done its job and if you get the idea of how to swap those fonts out then just a little bit of uh, minor proofreading and editing and it should be good okay hopefully that's helpful uh, if you have any questions uh, just find me on Facebook messenger I can answer them that way or you can leave an issue here in this git repository I'm not going to show you how to do that if you know how to do it great but you can actually open an um, issue there and I'll uh, deal with it all right, all right, Bob.